So wh when I came up with this topic, you know, I, I, I could have made it much broader, but I wanted to, to kind of focus the conversation in on how do I start my templates over? If I were to scrap what we have now, not completely, but start fresh to make sure everything is exactly how I need it to get the standardization completed with all the links and all the bells and whistles that SolidWorks offers related to templates. And I said, well, we really have to show that uh, from scratch. So that's what we're going to kind of talk about today. This presentation, once it's complete today, can be used as a guide going forward for your step-by-step -step process for creating templates. So that's how I'm presenting this. So we're going to talk about uh, where to start with templates. I'm going to give you multiple options with, with here today. We're talking about creating from scratch. I'm going to give you that step-by-step -step process. And then sh to show you the entire thing, we're going to talk about the property tab builder and how that might associate uh, with this as well. So just to, to start with the end goal today, uh, here's the title block and border that I'm going to create for you uh, in bits and pieces but I want to show you what this is going to look and feel like live so first thing uh, we would do is I would create a new part let's say and if I launched a new part and doesn't really matter what I use here the first thing in a, in a perfect world that we would do is we would use our property tab builder to fill out some information like the the project the drawing number you know description okay and then you get things like weight that come when you create an actual uh, solid piece to it you'll see that you actually get some weight uh, component to it and obviously my units are messed up this is not 254 pounds but um, using the property tab builder drives the information into the custom properties now my conversation today is going to gear away from using the custom properties section of the parts and assemblies okay so once we have this what I'm able to do is create a new drawing using the same method and here's my finished template that I just talked about and that finished template also has its own custom properties now I want you to notice as I do this I'm going to kind of zoom in on the title block now my property tab builder allows me and this is how this template set up I have a watermark I can do drawn by and drawn date information check by and check date and then approved by and approved date. Notice these properties are different than what we saw in the part file. We're going to have that conversation. And as soon as I apply them, they show up in my title block. The watermark that I described also shows up across the middle of the drawing. And now I can go ahead and lay out and create a, a model view here of the part that I created, making sure I save it. And once I create and place that model view, you'll notice the rest of the properties automate into the title block. So this is the goal, is to go through this process so that you can use the, the property tab builder as your interface for filling out the title block, take advantage of things like watermarks, and not have to edit your title block manually. But how do we start this from scratch? Again, our conversation today. So we don't have to start from scratch. We have really three main choices that we can use inside of SolidWorks as far as where to start. I can take the SolidWorks templates and I could go ahead and start to perform some modifications on them, which probably a lot of you have done. Um, I could import my templates using a DWG format, uh, making sure that I've followed uh, the rules as far as importing to the sheet format. I see a lot of problems with that. Or, as we're talking about today, we're going to start from scratch. Now, starting from scratch allows me to set up a process 
that we can follow every time. So if I want a new template, here's what I need to do for that template. And we're going to go all the way on down through to creating a property tab builder uh, tab to go along with your templates. So here are the steps that we need to perform. First thing we need to do is we need to really sit down and understand through all your sizes of drawings that you're going to create, what are the properties that you do need for your title block? Kind of get that organized. We're going to go ahead and create the border from scratch. We're going to talk about some of the tools we're going to use for that. Um, we need to give us uh, the ability to do the linking. So we have to do some other steps along the way. One is to create properties in parts and drawings. And I'll show you that process. We're going to place a view on the drawing, which will allow us to add the parametric notes. We're going to add any blocks and logos that we need. We're going to make sure we set all our options. And then we're going to have a little more discussion about sheet format versus template. So starting at the beginning, outlining your properties for your title block. Now this conversation is a little bit different depending on which organization you belong to. But here's how I'd like to think about this. When I start a part or an assembly inside of SOLIDWORKS, what type of information do you know right off the bat to describe that part or assembly? Things like description, part number, material, finish. Now, if that information is to be utilized in the title block, we want to kind of organize our thoughts in some sort of table so that we know which properties are going to be stored in the part file and which properties are going to be stored with the drawing. Now, when you create the part, you don't know anything about the approver and the checker and watermarking. That's associated specifically to the drawing. So here's how I've organized my properties for the template that we're going to create today. In the part, we're going to give some project information like you saw in the property tab builder. We're going to specify our revisions, put a description for the part. Uh, we're going to capture the weight, and we're going to put in a drawing number. Now, for the drawing, we want to capture the drawn by, approved by, checked by, and our watermarks, as you saw. So this table gives us a nice little format uh, going forward that we're going to utilize. You know, the next step in the process uh, is to create the border itself. Now, this is probably going to be the bulk of your time uh, creating and, and working with this border. Now, in order to understand the border uh, in SOLIDWORKS, we have to have this conversation. And for some reason, over time, uh, this has always been a very confusing part of SOLIDWORKS. Sheet format versus the sheet. Now, when I say border, what I'm really doing is I'm creating the title block border that is part of the sheet format. Another part of that sheet format is all the notes that we're going to be doing the linking. So think of that as a layer that's going to be slapped on top of the other part, which is your sheet which is your paper size definition, your options, any tables. Those two things go together. So let's keep that in mind as we kind of move forward in the conversation today, sheet format versus the sheet. Now creating the border, because it's part of the sheet format, we got to make sure we create it on the sheet format. Now we're going to use all sorts of tools inside of SOLIDWORKS to create the border. Everything from sketching to patterning to some of the grid tools, uh, the line format toolbar for line color, line thickness. Uh, maybe some of you are not aware of this, the ability to hide and show annotations and uh, how that works. And how do we actually get in to the sheet format? So how do we get started? Let's go ahead and dismiss this one for a second. And the first thing we want to do is, if you're starting from scratch, is to go ahead and grab one of SOLIDWORKS templates. Now, it doesn't matter which uh, sheet format and size. Just make sure you pick the same size that you're creating, in this case, a B-size landscape. And you'll notice SOLIDWORKS puts its own format on there, and we're used to this. Now, the first thing we want to do is to go in and delete everything off that format. In order to get to the format, 
we have to right click in the template and select edit sheet format which brings me back into that layer that layer we talked about that's sitting on top of the paper I now have access to everything on it and in this case because we're starting from scratch I'm gonna go ahead and delete it well now we want to create our own border that looks like the one that we presented initially so we're gonna get into sketching we're gonna use standard tools to be able to start to draw my border now the the issue with starting to sketch out your border is we really need some more precise positioning of, of items. Uh, there's some standards as to the, the spacing of the title block to the edge of the paper and so on. Well, I can't uh, put a dimension between a sketch line and the edge of the paper. So here's where our grid is going to come into play. We're going to go ahead and uh, if you right click in the sheet format, you can physically display the grid. Now, other than being blocks that I can line up to, I really need to understand uh, you know, what the distances are. Let's say I needed a uh, one inch border around the outside of this thing. Now, the best way to do that is to go into your tools options under document properties and grid and snap. This is where we specify the grid spacing, the major lines, and the number of minors per major. So I'm going to just change this to 8 here. Now what that allows me to do now that I go into the spacing of the corner is I can now move this the corner of this rectangle exactly where I need it to be. Okay, and this gives me in this case a half inch spacing all the way around. Now I'm going to have to go to each corner to do this just to make sure I got everything exactly the way I want and I tend to zoom way in on this as well and I apologize on the, the webinar just so you can get right on those lines with very little deviation okay and you're gonna go ahead and do this uh, on all four corners now the next thing we need to do is is uh, draw the portions of the title block obviously standard sketching a uh, couple of things that I, I try to focus on when I do this is don't try to create multiple line segments. Uh, if there's a line running all the way across, make sure you follow kind of our standard sketching rules and sketch it as a, a single item. Uh, also, anytime you could take advantage of patterning, and I'm going to show you here as we create this, taking advantage of patterning in your title blocks is just as important as patterning uh, inside of uh, SolidWorks sketching. It's a little bit different to use if you haven't used it. Under Tool Sketch Tools, you can actually perform a linear pattern. Now, instead of specifying direction using a selection like we, we've done in the past, uh, what you actually use is an angle. So if I want to copy that line 90 degrees, you can see 90 degrees is completely vertical. So for me to copy it down, I would use, in this case, 270 degrees. I can specify my spacing between them and the number of times I want to repeat the line. And that way it gives me the proper spacing. Now, I'm going to do some trimming a little bit later, but another thing to be careful of is to watch out for your relationships because you want to create a title block that's going to be easy uh, to work with later. So, you know, picking up things like here, the, the center point of that line, you may want to avoid uh, doing that um, unless you knew for sure that was always going to be the center point. At some point you can go ahead and, and come in here and do a little bit of trimming. In this case we're going to remove several areas that we we know are uh, not going to be utilized. Now here's the benefits of having the patterning. You know, now I can go ahead and adjust the, the lines and the spacing in my border updates as expected. It just it's going to help you going forward when your boss comes to you and says, "Hey, can you just tweak this title block and we need to put this information in there?" Uh, it becomes important to be able to do that. 
Now you'll notice that there's a dimension for my pattern uh, in my title block. Well, there's no problem using dimensions to start to uh, position and space geometry. Now sometimes uh, you may or may not want to uh, keep your grid on, so you can go ahead at any point in time and turn that off, and we can go ahead and start to actually specify distances that we want uh, the spacing of the lines to actually be. Let's say we're going to use a half inch there, and we want three quarter inch spacing here. And we'll make sure these are the same. We're going to go ahead and put three quarter here. Now, this is may seem like a tedious process, but what this is going to allow you to do is to adjust them a lot easier later on. Um, because once you get into fonts and font sizes and how that's going to look, you're really going to want uh, some control over what's there. You may want to, you know, get to the point of getting the overalls, you know, total heights, you know, things like that. Get everything in here that you might need uh, so that you can uh, adjust it further. Now, some other tools that you're going to, to get into here. You'll notice that my sketch lines are blue. There's a toolbar called Line Format. And on that line format toolbar is the ability to change the line color. Now you typically aren't going to want your border to be blue. So what I would do is I would select everything, go to my line color, and give it the color black. Now another option for those of you familiar with it would be to use layers. I tend not to use layers. It just seems like a, an extra step that's not needed. But um, Changing the color is important. The other thing that you may want to adjust is the line style and thickness. Uh, there's another tool also on line format for that where I can go ahead and adjust the thickness of my border. And you'll see here when I zoom in, that's much thicker than I had before. Uh, and it, it's really up to you how you want to adjust that. I'm just going to keep mine, mine thin. Uh, and utilize it that way. So this is the tedious part. You draw your title block. We can always add stuff to it. When I'm done with it, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the paper where we add the views using a, a command called Edit Sheet. Okay, and that brings us back to it. Now instead of having you sit here and watch me draw a title block, uh, I've actually completed this a little further. Now there's one more item I want to add to this. When you have a multi-sheet drawing, the second sheet of the drawing typically doesn't have the same title block as the first. So what I would also recommend is to go ahead and add a sheet. Do the same thing on this sheet which is going to edit the sheet format and draw in the title block that you want on sheet two. Sheet two may only have a couple of the fields in the title block. Now what you end up with is something that looks like this, where you have sheet two with a few of the items on here. Sheet one has your entire title block all designed out with all your dimensions. Now, you obviously can't create a template that has a bunch of dimensions on there. So we need a way of getting rid of them temporarily. I need them because I want them to utilize them for changes later. Well, each dimension, if you right-click on it, you're going to have the ability to hide those dimensions. Now, that's fine. We, we, we know that we can do that. The problem usually resides when someone says, oh, I don't know how to get them back. So if I come in here and hide all the dimensions in this case, let's go ahead and hide that. All right, now how do I get them back? Well, under the View menu is a tool called Hide Show Annotations. And this can be used for hiding and showing not just dimensions but also notes, which is our next conversation. But if I use Hide Show Annotations, what it's going to do is show any grayed out or hidden annotations. If I want to show it, I just click on it, it now becomes shown. 
If I want to hide it, I just click on it again. So it's like a toggle. So it's a tool that stays on. When I'm done hiding or showing, I just turn the tool off, and it gives me everything I need. Okay, so we have our borders. I have my border for my second sheet. We can go ahead and uh, hide those dimensions as well, just so that we don't have anything showing. Now the next step in the process, probably just as tedious as your title block, and that's organizing and putting the notes uh, in the system here. So we have to put the notes that describe each of the fields, and then we have to create the notes uh, that are related to those fields. So let's just jump back to my PowerPoint just for a moment. Before we do that process, this next step is very, very critical. This, I think, is the one piece that people uh, miss out on when creating their own templates. And this is how I put it. You, if you know the properties like we outlined in step one, if we know what we need to link to, we next need to create parts and our drawing that actually has those properties. Okay, so let's show that for a second. You want to follow your outline and you want to populate the field with information that's common to that field. And I'll explain that as we go ahead and perform this. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a new part. And this time we don't have the property tab builder because we're just designing our templates. I know which properties that we're going to pull from the part, so I'm going to go ahead and create those manually. So going into File Properties inside of SolidWorks allows me to type in property names and values for those properties. Now, one thing I've been trying to preach is don't get caught up in this list. This list is just a text file that's contained inside of SolidWorks, and if you go through this process, you aren't going to need to even worry about this list because you won't ever need it. So in this particular case, we need to fill out our properties that we're going to use, and then, as I mentioned in my notes, is to fill it out with common text. So maybe you know that your project is, uh, you know, 20 character long characters long. So type in 20 characters. This is a block. So we would need project. We need description. We need. I'm just going to put in, we're going to put in a drawing number, and we're going to go ahead and put in weight. Now, weight is a little bit different because we aren't going to type in the weight each time. We actually want to gather up the mass from SolidWorks. So under the value and expression, we can actually tie to information from SOLIDWORKS, most of you know this, and I can tie to the mass of the part here. Now I also want to create some geometry, and I just have a little macro that creates a block. Now this I call the, the dummy part is going to be used to help us do our linking. So let's just save that right to my desktop, and we're going to utilize that in just a moment. Now back to my template. What I want to do here is, is very similar. I want to go to the file properties of the drawing, and I want to fill out all the information that I need that I'm going to link from the drawing, like drawn by, drawn date, checker, check date, watermark, all the things that we mentioned previously. Okay. Now we do this all because we need something to link to. And unless those properties exist, we won't be able to do our linking. So how does our, our linking occur? Well, some of our notes in the title block are what we call parametric, and some of them are static text. For instance, a project field uh, has a title here, title project, and then an actual linked note. 
So if we start to lay that out, we'll use our annotation tool. We'll go ahead and place an annotation in here. And this is just static text, so we're going to just type in project. Okay. Now our fonts, uh, you want to pay attention at this point uh, to the font that you're using, standardizing on your fonts, and also pay close attention to your alignment. Because once these fill out, if they're center aligned, they're going to you know, grow a different way as you start to populate them. Now, there's nothing wrong with copying a note. You can see that it still gives me the note here. I can go ahead and, and drop the note uh, in the bottom here. In this particular case, we're going to change this portion to uh, Century Gothic 14. Uh, we want it to be center aligned in this case. So we can move the note to the, to the center of the box here. But we're also going to link it. Now this is where you want to pay attention to what you're doing. Highlight the box. And off the left of the property manager is a link to property option. Now here's where our conversation about where does the property reside comes into play. Are we linking to a property that exists in the drawing? So we're going to use current document. Or are you linking to a property that comes from a part? Now, the terminology is a little bit confusing because the option to get it from the part is model in view specified in sheet properties. So what exactly does that mean, the model specified in view properties? Well, I'm just going to exit out of there for a moment. If I go to my sheet one that we're designing here and I go to the properties, there's a little option at the bottom to use custom property values from the model shown in. Well, the reason this is here is let's say you had five views on a drawing and one of those views of a different part or a different assembly. When it uses custom properties, you can tell it which view contains the parts that you're going to utilize. Otherwise, it takes the very first part that's placed in here. Now back to my note for a moment. When I go link to property and I specify model in view, you'll notice that it doesn't have project. Okay, that's a problem. And the reason is because there is no model on the drawing. So here's what I always do. Let's go ahead back to my sheet and I'm going to go ahead and just create a view of that model that we just created. That's just a dummy view. And the reason we do that is now when I go into my edit sheet format and I do my link to property, there's a model that we can link to. Now obviously that isn't going to be there when we actually get to our template, but I, now I can go ahead and link to my project. Okay? And I can go ahead and place that in there. Now I can utilize and position this exactly where I want it so that my project information shows up where I need. Now there's a couple other notes on this drawing that I, I think are, are worth showing. At the bottom we want to show sheet one of one, sheet one of two, depending on how many sheets we have. And if we go ahead and add that note in here, I can type in some of this information but I need it to always change. It needs to go from sheet one of how many to sheet two to of how many. Well, in the link to property is also another set of properties. They're SOLIDWORKS special properties. And you may be aware that these are all throughout SOLIDWORKS. But there's a couple of them in here. In here, you can link to the current sheet. And the other one will be the total sheets. So what I'm going to do is link to the current sheet, sheet one of, and then do a second link in the same note for the total number of sheets. So this will constantly update uh, so that it has the properties that we need. Now the same thing goes uh, down here for, for weight. We're just linking to the SOLIDWORKS special property 
that's already created. Let's see if there's any other ones that I want to focus on. I think that would be good. Another one would be scale. So if I drop the scale in here uh, and I wanted to link the property, that's also in here under sheet scale. Okay, so we can have something dynamic uh, in the sheet itself. Okay, so using this process, things you want to consider, definitely copy and paste. So if you've already set your font on some of the titles, you can go ahead and copy and paste and very easily be able to get the next title in there without having to modify and format everything. Uh, laying out what you want linked and what's unlinked. And the end result of this is a border that has everything you need in it. Now, this has all the linked uh, items in it, and I'm actually not in the sheet format. But if I edit the sheet format, you'll notice what happens here. I now have, and some of you may be seeing this, these big long notes that uh, describe what I'm linked to. These are the parametric notes. Now they're obviously longer than the fields that they are, they're used to create. Well, there's a couple things to think about with this. Under our view menu are a couple things there's an option called annotation link errors. Now, anytime you have a link on your title block that the software cannot find the property from the part, it creates an error. Now, if I turn that option on, you can actually see that there are fields here, but they're errored out because it's not finding that information. Okay. I tend to turn those off, but it's a great way of just checking to see if there are notes that have been linked. The other one is this annotation link variables. Um, with this on, that's where you're supposed to be able to see these link variables, these names, these drawn out uh, uh, note descriptions that tell you where it's getting the information. Okay. Now, if I were to mouse over um, one of the notes, in this case the drawn date, notice the, the label for this one is different than the label for description. Because in description, we're actually pulling that property from the part, and the drawn date, we're pulling it from this particular drawing. So when you see dollar sign PRP and then a property, you know that that's a property coming from the drawing. If you see PRP sheet, that's a property coming from the file specified in here. Okay, dollar sign PRP sheet. Okay, so this process is 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 very tedious, but you can review what you've done using these uh, annotation link variables and annotation link uh, errors. Okay. Now notice they disappear once you exit the title block. I believe this is where this comes into play. I don't know why mine isn't, but I think it should show up um, even on the border when you're exiting it. Uh, showing what you're actually linked to. So we've got our title block, we've got our links. Uh, what do we do with the actual parts that we've used to create the title block? Now I'm back here because we have a dummy file uh, attached to this thing. I can't save it as a template here. Well, once you create the links like we did with this project name, you can go ahead and delete the view off the drawing. You only needed it there to create the link. And notice that the project information disappears. 
Now the next thing that you want to do is go to the actual template itself and remove all the custom properties. We don't need this information in the template itself. It'll get filled out later. Okay? So back to our previous conversation. When we filled out those properties, it's only a temporary thing to make sure that we can create the links. Once we have the links, you can go ahead and get rid of it. That brings us to this stage. We have a title block uh, that's missing logos, and it's also missing some other text that is considered standard in our organization. So let's just bounce back to my slide for a moment. We've placed the view on the drawing. Okay, we've added parametric notes, talked about uh, alignment, font and font sizes, special properties. I will mention symbols here in just a moment. And then adding blocks and logos. Here are the three that I need to add. Uh, I need to add a block for my first versus third angle projection. This is a template that's going to use third angle projection. I'm going to put our proprietary and confidential note on there. Uh, and then I want to put a company logo. Now, the best way to approach this is to save out blocks. Now, if you haven't done this in SOLIDWORKS before, I can show you real quick and just, uh, just pick a template here. If there's something that you want to be a block, okay, edit your sheet format. This happens to be a note. You go to Tools, Block, Make. Okay, so you're adding two notes to a block. Okay, then if you right click on that new block, you can actually save it. And I'll just save mine out. I have a folder where I've put a few blocks in there that we're going to utilize. Now, now that I have this, I can go ahead and drop this in to my new drawing. Again, I'm going to go to the sheet format because I want all of these notes to be on the title block in the border which we're going to utilize. Okay, So let's go ahead uh, to insert the block. You go to Tools, Block, Insert. Okay, In this case, uh, I have a proprietary block that's going to be in this uh, section down here. Now another thing is notice how this is snapping. It gets very annoying when you get a lot of stuff in here and it starts to snap. Well, if you hold down your control key, uh, you can go ahead and place that without snapping to other things. Okay, but By default, it's going to try to align on all sides. Now, the next thing I need to do is insert the logo. Now hopefully, uh, before you created your border, you got an understanding of how big your logo is in inch, inches or millimeters, depending on your template. But once you do ha have that, you go to your uh, in tools, sketch tools, sketch picture, and you browse for a picture that you're going to use as your company logo and it will go ahead and place it on the drawing. Now you can lock the aspect ratio which allows you to do some scaling but you wanted to make sure that it's going to fit in your title block. Here's another reason why you uh, want some adjustability to your title block to be able to make things fit just just right. So we'll go ahead and place that into our title block. And now I have only one more piece in here I need to uh, insert my first versus third angle projection note, uh, which outlines what I'm actually using for projection. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with first versus third angle projection, I did put a little uh, blurb on this here. Let's get back in there. So, third angle projection is is common in the states. Uh, European standards will use first angle projection. 
Uh, it just has to do with how the views are folded uh, off of the front view and how they're represented. Um, but the symbol on the title block differs depending on the projection type that we're using. If we go back to SolidWorks for a moment, uh, I've placed the third angle projection, but I want to make sure that uh, I set up a little bit later everything so that my template is actually set to utilize third angle projection as well. So now I have everything I need in my title block for that. One other thing uh, we want to place kind of in the background here is my watermark. Now I didn't do that with the linking, so I'm going to kind of go back to our concepts before. Let's go ahead and go to my file properties of the drawing, and I need to create a note called watermark so I can link up a note in the sheet format. Okay. Oh, there actually is one on here. Now, if I edit the sheet format, this is no different than any other note. Uh, it's a note that's linked to a property called watermark. And with that note, uh, you have the ab ability to use your sketch tools to rotate it. So I rotated it. But there's one other piece that makes it very nice to have on your drawing. If you right click on a note, and this is, uh, I believe, added in 2013. You have the option with these notes to display them behind the text. Now when you display them behind the text, you can add views onto the drawing and it doesn't obstruct those. It will sit in the background of that as well. Okay. Once you have that link created, again, you can go ahead and delete the property and uh, that way you don't have any pre-existing information into it. Now, another part of this uh, that we want to talk about is Sheet 2. We use Sheet 2 as far as a setup exactly like we do Sheet 1. Um, but we want to make sure that every time I add a sheet, that it uses the sheet format for Sheet 2 from here on out. Now, how do we make that happen? When you're setting up your template, and you add a second sheet, what you want to do is go to the properties and make sure in your template that this is pointing to your sheet format for sheet two. Now this is where the conversation gets very tricky. Sheet formats are borders. We all agree on that. We talked about that at the beginning. So my goal with this was to create two borders that make up one template. They're both existing within a template. Well, I might want to use these borders on other old drawings where I want to swap out the borders. So what we do is we save out the sheet formats. So I actually have a sheet two format somewhere, and I'm going to show you how to actually save those out. So what I do in my template is I make sure it's pointing to the sheet 2 sheet format. Now the neat thing about a template is it never reloads the sheet format unless it's prompted for the dialog to do so. You'll notice when I go ahead and add a sheet, it didn't ask me what sheet format, it knew. And there's one very particular reason for this. In the template that I'm creating, if I go to my tools options, and I'm just going to do a quick search on format, there's an option in here under system options, and you're going to want to make sure this is set on anybody that, that's using your templates as a standard. It's show sheet format dialog on add new sheet. If this is on, it will bring up the dialog. If it brings up the dialog, you're going to be able to pick any sheet format. But if it doesn't bring up the dialog, it will automatically use the last one specified, which in my case happens to be sheet two. OK? 
Okay, so you can make this happen automatically. Now, also another gotcha with this option. If this option is on, let's say you send your template to somebody else. If this option is on, it will prompt you for the sheet format. And if you don't have the sheet format, it will blank out your template. You'll have issues. Now, hopefully we're all on board. When I'm talking about sheet format, we're talking about my title block and border. Okay. So what's the next step? Next step in the process is to set the options on our template. We now need to make sure everything is exactly where I need it as far as the document properties for my template. Am I using ANSI versus ISO standard? What are the units? Okay, the option show sheet format dialog, which is a system option. Something called anchors. I'm going to show you that. Adding your tables. If you have a rev table, here's where you go ahead and put that on the drawing as well. And then I'm going to show you where the first versus third angle projection is. So back to this. Go to your tools options from here. Go to document properties. Anything you set in here gets stored with the template. Okay, so if it's ANSI standard and you want to use different uh, attachment arrows or you want don't want automated center marks and center lines or you change your line style and thickness, all of that gets stored along with it. Now, first versus third angle projection. If I go to the properties of each sheet, here's where you specify the type of projection, first versus third angle. You want to make sure you've, you have that uh, set up as well. Make sure I hit everything. Anchors. Now, anchors are used when somebody adds a table to your template once they've created a drawing. Now, if I edit the sheet format, Let's say I always wanted my rev table to be anchored in that corner. I can select the corner, and if I expand my sheet format in my property manager, I can now go to my rev table and tell it to set anchor. What that does is it specifies on the, the template that when somebody puts the revision table, this is where the anchor is located so it will position that table in that corner as needed so there's ankles for all sorts of stuff in here okay you can set anchors for all those items moving forward as well okay all right getting a little bit uh, short on time here so now we have the two pieces together. We have our sheet format and we have our sheet. But how do we save them out as separate things? And why do we need the sheet format separately? Okay, let's talk about that. Well, the sheet format, as we've been talking about, is our border. It's our parametric notes. It's our blocks. It's our logos. The sheet, and this should say sheet, uh, has our options, our anchors, our our drawing size stored with it. The two of them together make up a template. Okay. So I have my template. Uh, I need to save out the sheet format. Let me get rid of the sheet here, the sheet three. And then one other thing that I like to do, uh, this is optional. But I like to zoom in on the border and then hit my space bar and actually save a view. Now I save my title block sheet one and title block sheet two. What that allow is anybody using your template can hit space bar, go right to the title block with one click. Once they ha have all that set, first thing you want to do is go to page one. You want to save the sheet format. Okay, I'm going to just save this to my desktop, give it a name, B-Size Landscape. And remember, we have a, a border for page one and a border for page two. 
The file extension is SLD DRT. And you can go ahead and, and save that out. Go to page two and do a file save sheet format. And now you're, you're saving page two somewhere you want to reutilize it. And then the, the last and final piece is to actually save it as one big bundle that's all working together, which is your template. And just do a save as, save as template, which is a DRW DOT, and save it in a location uh, that you can utilize later on. Okay, and this is my LNL template, my Lunch and Learn. All right, we'll go ahead and save that. Now the template, like I said, stores the sheet format and the paper and all, all that information together like a zip file. And the only reason it, it would ever look for a title block again is if that dialog came up uh, that allowed you to pick the title block. Now the last piece of this entire puzzle really has to do with the property tab builder because now we want to give your users a an interface to fill out that information because if you go in here let's say watermark if you go into file properties and you rely on somebody to type in watermark exactly like you linked it what if I put in water mm mark and I typed in a value it's not going to show up the, the issue is it has to be exact, and by creating these uh, templates, these custom property tab builder templates, you can make sure that it's the same every time. Now, how do I do this? It's very, very simple. <coughs> if you go to your Start menu in, in Windows and under SolidWorks, SolidWorks Tools, you'll find your property tab builder. So if you're start, it'll always come up with a new tab here. You have to specify whether you're creating a property tab builder for a part, assembly, drawing, or for a weldment. So in this case, if it's a drawing, I go ahead and specify it. And we can start to group things, like you see off to the right. We group things in our property tab. Uh, first one is my watermark definition. So we, we title the box, watermark definition. Okay, and then we have to fill out what the field is going to look like. In this case, it's a list. So I drag the list box into that grouping. Now, what, is I, what do I want it to show the user? It's going to pop up a little note, a shortcut note that says watermark. Uh, the, this is where it's the most important. This has to be the same as the linked note. So it's watermark, all one word. And then I can go ahead and give it a list. Now for production. Okay. Now the same thing goes for things like uh, approved by. Uh, you can use a list that has the names of the users. Uh, that's a good way to do it. Uh, if it's a date, if I use a text box, um, you have the option to use date. And by selecting date as the type of box, that's what brings up the calendar. So your goal is to get to this point where you actually have a property tab that's specific to your drawings with all the pull-down menus, uh, everything that works with names, dates, calendar information, and so on. And this is what ties it all together so that your title block takes the information from the part, from the drawing, and puts it in the proper spot, always gives it the proper font and spacing. Now from here, what you're going to do to create your C size and your D size is you're going to go ahead and take this border and place it on those different sizes and scale it to create those other sizes. Now I also made the comment of why do we actually want to save the sheet format out? Why would I want to do that? Well with old drawings, let's say I had one of the SOLIDWORKS drawings here 
and I want to use our format. We have a new format. I want to use the. I don't want to change the paper. I don't want to change the options. I want to just change the border that we're using. Well, that's where you can go to the properties and browse to a different sheet format. I can go in there and grab my my sheet formats that I want to use. And not sure where I put them. <laughs> Uh, I think they're right on my desktop, actually. I go ahead and grab my sheet format. And what it will do is it will go ahead and uh, swap that out for us. Okay? So that's why you want a sheet format. I think we have some questions here. So we'll go ahead and uh, take some questions to close. Uh, I think we've uh, we've gotten through all the material here. So... Uh, questions. All right, we got quite a few of them. First one, when you're drawing your sheet format, can't you just snap to the grid instead of zooming way in to make sure that your corners are in the upper spot? Absolutely, you can use grid snap. Um, depending on your grid spacing uh, and the number of blocks, uh, you may need to get even more refined and the snapping becomes a little bit harder because there's too many things to snap to, uh, but snapping does work. Just turn on your grid snap. Uh, let's see. Did you add the dummy block then hide it? No, I added the dummy block, created my links. Once I had my links done, you delete it. So the dummy block is used to create a view on the drawing for linking. Do you have a suggestion for handling longer descriptions that would otherwise extend beyond the title block? Uh, I currently use wrap text field as a default. Um, I've seen a lot of organizations go to a different structure that is uh, a description, like a three-line description, a possibility. So you use three separate properties, description one, description two, description three, and you know, you you get the understanding that you can only have X number of characters in each line, so that instead of trying to use the wrapping, uh, you can put a little bit of information in each line to get that formatting correctly. Hopefully, that makes sense. Uh, is there a way to make the revision history table parametric? If not, what is your recommendation in the revision history table? So if I go ahead and uh, insert a revision table for a moment here, and I go ahead and insert a row. Now this field here, um, we can't currently type in and actually tie it uh, to a particular property. So you know, I kind of wish there was a way to do that. I can't go ahead and add any notes in here that are parametric. Uh, this is more of a, a manual field thing. As far as I know, I don't see anything coming down the pipe for this, but uh, currently not anything we can do. Uh, let's see where we're at. Uh, how do you edit existing property tabs? So to edit existing property tabs, you go to the property tab builder, open up, you're looking for PRT PRPs for parts, DRW PRPs for drawings, and ASM PRPs for assemblies. Just open them up, and then you can modify any of the fields and information that's contained in those. Where do you save the property tab file so others can use them? Now, it doesn't matter where you save them, except that everyone needs to be able to browse to that directory. So typically, it's going to be a server. Once that's on the server, you're going to go to your file locations, and you're going to put the path in under custom property files. So you're going to point each installation SolidWorks to the same set of custom property files. Okay, so... Uh, as far as where it's stored, it's not a requirement to be on the server, but uh, if you're going to share it, um, 
uh, from your local PC, everyone's going to have to be able to see the folders. So it's probably recommended to put it on a server. Uh, is the property tab builder new for 2013? No. Uh, where do you save? We've got that. When replacing a format, the property fields shift positions. How can I stop that? Um, I'm not aware of that. Um, I, I would just put that in through our support. I don't, I don't see that. That shouldn't be an issue. Um, when you switch form formats, what it should do is grab the properties that were linked. Uh, from existing properties in the file uh, in the formatting is all contained in the sheet format. There may be some mismatch in your your sheet formats. So that's all the